Hello and welcome to Unity Explained. Today we'll be taking a look at the transform component, so let's get into it. The transform component is the most basic component in Unity. It stores the object's position, rotation, and scale values. A game object will always have a transform component and you cannot remove a transform component from a game object. The position property of the transform component is simply a description of where the object is in the world. It's represented by three coordinates being x, y, and z, where y is the up coordinate, z is the depth coordinate, and x is the default left and right coordinate. The rotation property of the transform defines the rotation of the object in the world, represented by the rotation amount in degrees around its x, y, and z axis. Scale is the last property of the transform component. Scale defines the stretching of an object along its x, y, and z axis. When the scale is set to 1, the object has its original size and is not stretched in any way. If the scale is 0.5 on a certain axis, it means it's half of the original size. So now that we know the basics about the transform component, let's go into Unity, create an object, and see how the transform component behaves inside of the engine. So I'll go game object. 3D object and cube. Then we have a cube. And as you can see, among other things that we will not be discussing today, we have a transform component. And as you can see, if I create an empty game object, it will also have a transform component. And I cannot remove this component in any way because it is a core component and you cannot have a game object without a transform. Let's delete this and let's check out our cube. So as you can see, the position of the object is not exactly 0, 0, 0 because we have positioned the camera in a certain way in the world and the object was created in front of the camera. So what you can do is you can just go here or and type 0, 0, 0 to have your object on a certain position. Or what you can do is go right click and then reset. When you reset a transform component, all of the values except for the scale value will be set to 0. The scale value will be set to 1. Let's say we want to edit some of the transform's properties. There are multiple ways in which you can do that. The first and the simplest way is to simply put the values right inside of the inspector for the specific property that you want. So let's say we want to move the object by 2 meters in the x direction. We simply click right over here, type 2, and we can then press enter or click somewhere else. And that's a side note, the default the unit in Unity is 1 meter. So if you type in 1, that's 1 meter. Another way you can change the values is by simply putting your mouse over the actual value and then just sliding it from left to right. As you can see, it moves across the world space as I'm moving the cursor on the screen. I'm holding my left mouse button right now. The third way is by using the gizmos. As you can see in our scene view, we have multiple gizmos. So this is the Y direction. As you can see, the Y value is moving in the inspector. This is the Z direction, the blue one, and this is the X direction, the red one. You can see the values and represented coordinates right over here. So that's a little cheat sheet if you ever forget. So let's say we want to uh, edit other values. Of course, you can simply drag right here for the rotation. I can also type in a value, but I can also change the gizmos right over here. So I have a bunch of gizmos over here. I can select the rotate tool. Now I have the rotate tool and I can rotate it around the specific axes by using this gizmo. Same goes for scale. So I'm first going to reset this to make things simpler. So let's say I want to scale it. I go right over here and let's say I want to scale it by two times in the X axis. If I type two, now the cube is twice as long in the X direction. So let's put it to one. So if I want to scale it in specific axes, I can just click right over here and scale it like this. I can then click over here and scale like this and you get the point. But what you also can do is you can also scale all of them at the same time by using the little middle cube and clicking it and then dragging it. Now that we know the basics of transforms and how to edit values, the next thing that's really useful to know, and really useful to understand is how parenting works. So right over here, I have two game objects. This is the first cube and this is the second cube. The first one is named cube one and cube two. Now what I can do is I can drag the cube uh, two under cube one. So now cube two becomes a child of cube one. So now it's what's really important is that the transform values right over here 
this became local values relative to the transform of the parent. So as you can see, if I, for example, move this object's position by four, in the x axis, you can see that it, you know, it says its position is four zero zero, which makes sense. But if we go to the cube two, it still says its position is zero zero four because that was its original position relative to the parent object. So if we can, for example, move it right over here, and let's ah, let's let's put it like this, and let's say we drag it outside, and it's no longer a child of the cube one. So if you do this, you can see that the instantly the values of the transform change because now this is relative to the world space. So right now it's relative to the local space and now it's relative to the world space. Rotation works really similarly to position in terms of local and world scales. Now if we were to rotate this cube by 90 degrees in the x-axis, you can see that the original cube's rotation is still zero. But if we move it outside, you can see that because we rotated it together with this object, its rotation is also now 90 degrees. Now, since rotation and uh, position work really similarly, there's another thing that works kind of weird if you've never really thought about it and if you haven't really encountered it before, and that is scale. I'm just going to reset this to zero, zero, and I'm going to reset this to zero, four. And I'm going to do something really interesting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scale this cube by twice in the X axis. Now what happens is, well, it's logical. If you scale this one, this one scales as well. But here's the thing. Now we're going to introduce rotation. And as we're going to rotate this object, we can see it starts to stretch in a really weird way because this is no longer just a stretch cube. This is a completely different uh, object is completely different ge geometrical shape. So if we continue rotating. We can see that it just sort of shapes and morphs into various different things, right? Now, it's, it's almost like a, a diamond shape right now. That's because the objects are scaled relative to the parent object. So uh, the parent object X axis is going in this direction if we click it. So this is the X axis and the entire child game object will be scaled not along their own x-axis, but the x-axis of the parent game object. So that's really important if you want to scale your objects and so you have some children that are not in 0, 0, 0 rotation. So that's something to keep in mind while developing. I know I've personally had a lot of problems with it when I was first starting out with Unity, and that's why I'm trying to help you guys out to figure that stuff out. The transform class is implemented in Unity Engine core module. So in order to use it, you're going to have to put using Unity Engine at the top of your C# -sharp script. Now, when you create a script in Unity, it usually comes in there by default, so you probably won't have to do anything, but it's just something to keep in mind if you're not using Unity's editor to create scripts. Now, there are a bunch of properties and a bunch of public and static methods for the transform. I'm not going to go over all of them. Uh, if you have any specific requests, feel free to leave it in the comments below. But I really encourage you to dig into the documentation because it's really good. It really helps you with the examples. And I know it helped me a lot when I was starting first in Unity. So it's linked in the description. Go check it out. And if you have any questions about the video, if you have any video requests, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope you all have a nice day. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.